Good evening, my name is Rebecca Frederick and I'm a postdoctoral researcher over at the Carnegie Institution. Tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about the problems that are facing stem cell biologists. So right now, everybody in this room is being kept alive by your stem cells. You have stem cells in your skin that are making new skin, stem cells in your gut that are making new intestine, and stem cells elsewhere that are healing the injuries that you get every day just in an ordinary life. But what we'd really love to know is how can we harness that incredible power of stem cells for tissues or organs that are harder to heal, that don't heal as well on their own? For example, the brain. Could we someday get a stem cell treatment for Alzheimer's? Did Peyton Manning really get a stem cell treatment in Europe for his neck injury? In order to even begin to think about that, we need to understand what a stem cell is and what properties of it control what it could become. A stem cell, by definition, sits in our body and every once in a while it divides. When it divides, it makes a copy of itself. It also makes a daughter cell, and that daughter cell can go off to college and get a career. In the body, the career looks like it moved away, it got a different shape, it does a different function. The stem cell divides throughout the course of our lifetime, and its daughters can go off and have different majors. They can get different careers. But we really want to know, in order to use those in medicine, we need to understand what defines the possible daughter careers, the possible majors for a daughter cell. And that really, for the stem cell, boils down to where it's been and where, it's, where it is now. So it's history and it's neighborhood. To use an example that we all in Baltimore can understand, let's look at the price of row houses. So a row house in a one particular neighborhood, let's say Hamden, when it's fully rehabbed, gets sleek appliances, a sleek price tag, and attracts a certain kind of buyer. By contrast, a row house in a place like McElderry gets a much lower price tag, much cheaper appliances. So that really speaks to um, how the neighborhood of a row house determines the price, right? And it's very similar to how where the stem cells are now can determine where their daughters can go to school. So how could we use this in medicine? Well, we could start to change the neighborhood to affect the row home price or to affect the, stem or the daughter careers. So for example, in McElderry, we could consider changing the existing neighborhood around the homes. We might raise the price of that row home if we filled all the vacant houses that are within two blocks. In the case of stem cells, we need to change the environment within the body. And that's much more complicated, but it's really exciting if we could think about changing a skin cell to not only be able to make skin cells, but also to make neurons. These are the kind of ideas that we're thinking about. An entirely different strategy for using stem cells in biology is to take them out of the body, grow them in a petri dish, add a bunch of chemicals, and ask them to become daughter cells or career cells in the petri dish. Then those career cells could be put back into the body. But of course, what's really controversial about this strategy is where do you get the stem cells to start with? And it speaks to the history of the stem cell. As I mentioned, the history is very important for what the career can do, or what the daughters can do. So naive cells could come from an embryo. They, in theory and in development, can, do, can become any kind of cell in the body. But of course, there are people that have some challenges with taking cells from an embryo. We could also take cells from adults, but we still really don't understand the details of what about the history of adult cells or what about the environment of the, stem, of the embryonic stem cells contributes to how the, how the daughters can go to college. So these are questions that my colleagues and I over at the Carnegie Institution are really interested in, and we're studying them in the fruit fly, yeah, they also have stem cells, and in the mouse. And we're asking how we can change, or we're using the ability of these organisms to change the environment around the stem cells and ask how that changes what the daughter does. We also can change the history of the stem cell. We can make it divide more quickly or more slowly and ask how that really affects, again, what the daughters become. One of the other awesome things about this system is that we can even make tumors in it. And determine what happens to stem cells in a tumor or how they can contribute to things like cancer. So lest you think that we, ha we are so far behind on the details that we're never going to get there in medicine, we actually already use stem cell treatments. It's known as a, bo a bone marrow transplant. So we take the stem cells from one person, we put them in another. 
but we really don't know the details about how to change the environment and how to change the neighborhood in order to figure out how to treat a neck injury. So I'll say that if Peyton Manning really did have any stem cell treatments, he didn't get a contract. Thank you.